On behalf of the League of Women Voters of the Spokane area, welcome to our 2020 general election candidate forum featuring candidates for Spokane County Commissioner District 1. I'm Jenny Darrell, your moderator. Election day for the 2020 general election is Tuesday, November the 3rd, 2020. Ballots will be mailed to all registered voters about three weeks before election day and must be postmarked or deposited in conveniently located ballot boxes no later than 8 p.m. on election day. The League recommends returning your ballot as early as possible. You can register to vote by mail or online by October 26, 2020. You can register in person or drop off your ballot downtown now through Saturday, October 31st at the Elections Office at 1033 West Gardner Avenue, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4 p.m. The Elections Office will not be open for in-person services on November the 2nd and 3rd. However, on November 2nd and 3rd, you can do the same activities at the Veteran Memorial Arena at the North Entrance the address is approximately 751 West Boone, and that facility will be open Monday from 8.30 to 4 p.m. and Tuesday 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., and that is again on November the 2nd and 3rd. You can also register to vote or drop off your ballot at Spokane Valley, October the 16th through November the 3rd, including Saturday, October the 31st, at the Center Place Event Center in the Valley, Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. For other questions about casting your ballot or information about the candidates, contact the Spokane County Elections Office at 509-477-2320 or visit their website, spokanecounty.org forward slash elections or on the League of Women Voters Online Voters Guide at vote411.org. I will be asking the candidates questions that have been formulated by the League's Voter Services Committee and will ask as many questions as time allows. Before the questions begin, the candidates will have up to 30 seconds to introduce themselves and tell the voters why they're running. Candidates will have up to one minute to answer each of the questions with additional time for rebuttal or a follow-up question as appropriate. Each candidate has the opportunity for one 30-second rebuttal of your choice. And each candidate will have the opportunity for a 30-second closing statement. The first speaker for each question will alternate with each question. Now I'll introduce the candidates. They are Ted Cummings, Democrat, and Josh Kearns, Republican. Starting with you, Mr. Cummings, you'll have 30 seconds to tell us why you're running for county commissioner. Well, good evening. Thank you for having me here. Uh, I'm running for county commissioner because I I was concerned about uh, the current commissioner's stance on, on uh, uh, labor and uh, his ties to the Freedom Foundation. That was the, the thing that initially caught my attention. Um, I think a county commissioner should serve all the people and not just the wealthy and connected. I think you should support working families and that's what I intend to, to do. Thank you, Mr. Cummings. Mr. Kearns? Yeah, th thank you to the League of Women Voters for organizing tonight's forum. Uh, I'm running for county commissioner because the people of Spokane County deserve a commissioner who will work to protect and grow jobs, protect your tax dollars, and prioritize public safety. I am that commissioner. For the last four years, I've been dedicated to making this the best place to live, work, and raise a family. I'm committed to leading our county to a safe, strong, and healthy recovery. Thank you. Our first question will be for Mr. Kearns and you'll have up to a minute to answer. What do you consider to be the most important responsibilities of a county commissioner? 
And what specific training, experience, and skills do you have that have prepared you for this position? The most important responsibility of a county commissioner is representing the people of Spokane County. A commissioner is your voice in county government. Uh, commissioners are unique in that they're both the legislative branch and the executive branch of county government. Uh, prior to becoming a commissioner, I worked for the uh, largest legislative body within Washington State, that being the Washington State House of Representatives. Uh, I've also, I, I'm a small business owner with my wife, and, uh, and I've proven my experience uh, having served uh, as your county commissioner for the last four years. Thank you. And Mr. Kearns. Ted Cummings. But, Cumming. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry, Mr. Cumming. Um, I, I, I agree. I think uh, the county commissioner sets the tone of our county. We need a, we need a commissioner that uh, doesn't intimidate or threaten or, or disenfranchise any part of our, our community or any demographic. Um, when I see people like our militias on our street and, and people uh, in parks with guns, I think that sends the completely wrong message of who we need. Absolutely coming out of this pandemic, we're gonna need to really uh, work for our small business owners and to, and to get this economy moving again. But we have to have a, a county commissioner that is focused on the people and puts people first. And to do that, we're gonna to need to have good paying jobs and benefits. We've got to get uh, people back to work and avoid this uh, tsunami of homelessness that's coming our way. Thank you. The second question, we'll start with Mr. Cummings. Current law requires Spokane County to expand to five commissioners in 2022. What are your thoughts about this expansion and how would you propose to draw the new district boundaries? So uh, initially I had reservations about uh, expanding it and it was driven primarily because I'm, I'm running in a race now and there was no other democratic candidate. So I had a concern that uh, to field uh, candidates in all these additional posts when we're, we're having trouble filling the ones we are now, we need to make sure that we have, uh, we don't set barriers for people to run for office. Um, on, re on considering it further, I think this is gonna be a good, a good development for Spokane. It's gonna give the certain demographics and, and minority vo uh, viewpoints to sit on this commission and have their voice be heard. Uh, Spokane is traditionally uh, pretty red and, and this should give us some more diversity and allow for better decision making. So I, I'm excited about this change and I'm looking forward to seeing it unfold. Thank you, Mr. Cummings. Mr. Kearns. Yeah, um, so in 2015, uh, the voters actually defeated a, a proposal that, that would have just added two additional commissioners and made no, no other changes. This new law moves the commission to five, but it also changes the, the way the commissioners are elected. Uh, and they will run both uh, in the district and uh, or they'll run just in a district within both the primary and the general elections. So there will be no more countywide elections for commissioners. Um, the, the law actually lays out the process for drawing district boundaries, uh, which will be done by a local bipartisan redistricting commission, which is appointed by our county's state legislative delegation. So our local uh, senators and representatives will appoint folks to that, uh, that, that commission and that four person voting board will adopt uh, uh, the new boundaries by the fall of 2021, very much modeled after the state redistricting commission but you know, wh whether I represent just a district or the county, uh, it doesn't change my commitment, which is to protect and grow jobs, protect your tax dollars and prioritize public safety. Okay, thank you very much. The third question is gonna go to Mr. Kearns first. How would you rate the Spokane County's response to COVID-19 and what other actions would you support going forward? Also, if the county receives additional federal coronavirus relief funds this, this next year, what would, you be pri what would be your priorities for the use of these funds? Okay. 
Yeah, so um, I, I think we, we had a good response. Uh, at the beginning of this pandemic, we were the first local jurisdiction within the county to declare a state of emergency. Uh, shortly after that, we were followed by all the cities. Uh, we stood up our emergency operations center, uh, which was run by the county's Department of Emergency Management. Uh, we began daily briefings uh, about the, the, the coronavirus that were led by Sheriff Ozzie Knezovich and our regional health director. Uh, we created working groups that were focused on uh, PPE acquisition, food security, business recovery, uh, testing capacity, um, and, and child care, just to name a few. Um, once we received that initial uh, disbursement of the $91 million of CARES Act funding, we prioritized public health with the health districts, COVID response with $8 million. We've also given $6.5 million to Second Harvest Food Bank because nobody in our community should go hungry during the COVID pandemic. Um, okay. and, and we've, Your time is up. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Cummings. So I, I have some real concerns. I think. Uh, so the, one of the appointments to the health board was done by Mr. Kearns and uh, at a public rally, he was promoting uh, snake oil and, and unproven uh, treatments for COVID uh, along with uh, maybe disparaging mask usage. I think it's vital that we have a commissioner that can appoint people to our health board that are, are properly vetted and qualified. I mean, it, it endangers public health to put mixed messages out there. And it adds to the confusion. We see that not only a local level, but uh, uh, countrywide. So we need, we need a commissioner that's going to, to really uh, pick the, the qualified people for that. Uh, if we get additional funds, we absolutely need to support our businesses. We need to work on, on rent relief and make sure that we don't add to the homeless problem in Spokane County. Thank you very much. Could, could I use my 30 second rebuttal? You may. Okay. Um, you know, the, 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 the county has focused on, on small business relief. We, we set up a, a grant program for our struggling small businesses where we've used uh, $11.3 million. Uh, we also received receive funding from the State Department of Commerce for uh, for, for rental assistance. Uh, as, as to my opponent's uh, misinformed uh, ad attack, um, my appointment to the health board is the only individual that actually treats patients for a living. He's the only one with medical background. And uh, his remarks were, were just off base and incorrect. Your time is up. Thank you. We can proceed to question four if you like. Sure. Okay. This one will go to Mr. Cummings first. What has been done and what else do you propose to assist small businesses or who are facing serious financial loss because of COVID-19? So I, I think we need to uh, use all the, the funds that we can and reallocate towards uh, supporting business and getting people back to work. Obviously that can't happen uh, until it's safe to go back to work. So. I, I think we need to follow the, the guidelines that are out there by uh, the health board and, and the governor. And as we can reopen, we need to do whatever relief and aid uh, that we can muster. And I think we're gonna need to look for federal help on this. I think it's such a deep hole that we're in. We're gonna need to explore every avenue that we can to get programs up um, and whatever relief we can find to stimulate the economy. And I think that a lot of that's going to be trying to find jobs, infrastructure projects, and, and really brainstorming with every group we can uh, to stimulate uh, creative growth in, in Spokane County. Thank you very much. Mr. Kearns? Yeah, so um, we, we need to make sure that, uh, that, that folks are employed within our community. Um, you know, so, some of our industries in the hos in, uh, around hospitality and tourism have just been decimated. They have some of the highest rates of unemployment right now. Um, so when, when the, we on the Board of County Commissioners allocated the $11.3 million for those small business grants, it was every, in, anywhere between $2,500 to $10,000 of grants that were given given to these struggling small businesses. Uh, one of the other things that we did is we've we've given out millions of dollars uh, in free personal protective equipment, and that's 
that's uh, reusable and disposable masks, that's hand sanitizers, surface sanitizers, plexiglass, you know, the, the items that these small businesses are struggling to get a hold of, uh, struggling to to acquire at a reasonable price, but those are the types of things that are going to keep not only their employees safe, but the customers safe when they start uh, going into these businesses as well. Thank you very much. The next question, we'll start with Mr. Kearns. What are your greatest concerns about the criminal justice system in Spokane County, and how would you address them? What um, my greatest concern with the criminal justice system is the number of people uh, in, in the criminal justice system that are dealing with mental illness. Um, I, I had asked our, our detention services director a while back how many folks in the jail are struggling from some form of mental illness, and he estimated it was over 50 percent. That's why we launched programs um, like the one that pairs mental health professionals up with our sheriff's deputies in their cars when they're responding to, to services uh, to, to calls for service. Uh, when a deputy responds to a situation where mental, mental illness or mental health is, is related there, these mental health professionals are trained in de-escalating these situations. They have a fantastic rate of diversion um, and avoiding that individual having to be taken to jail. That's also why we're building a mental health crisis stabilization facility to give law enforcement another option for an individual that is suffering from a mental health crisis because jail is not the place for someone to go when they need mental health care. Thank you. And there was a second part to that question, but you fairly well answered it, I think. Oh. <laughs> and, and that is what improvements, if any, have been made in recent years and what concerns okay. do you still have? So, Mr. Cummings. So, uh, I, I agree that mental health is, is a huge issue. And my concern is, is the, the current path now is to build a, a bigger jail and add more law enforcement on our streets. And I, and I think that's absolutely the wrong way to go. We can, we can reallocate that money to mental health, to uh, programs, treatment programs, uh, addiction uh, treatment and uh, job training, apprentice programs. Um, that's the direction that I wanna go is, is to find out why these people are, are reoffending or offending in the first place and divert all that. And I think that's investing in education, that's investing in, in daycare, in, in our schools and in, in lunch programs. It's investing in our community. Um, I, I have no interest in hiring more law enforcement. I absolutely support our, our law enforcement, but we need, to, we need to find other uses of that money, better uses of that money. Thank you, sir. Our next question, we will start with Mr. Cummings. Where have the county and city consolidated functions in recent years and what future opportunities do you see for consolidation of specific functions to enhance local government efficiency and effectiveness? So uh, the, the first thing that comes to mind is our 9-11 our system. And, and I've heard that that hasn't gone as smoothly uh, as a lot of people would, would like. But anywhere that we can find uh, places to uh, use economies of scale and, and avoid overlapping or redundancy, um, I, I'm absolutely in favor of. I think we need to have a, a, uh, a county that works well with all the cities within the county and all those different uh, mayors and, and uh, city officials. So I, I'm look to, looking for whatever way I can support the cities in Spokane County and to streamline uh, county operations and use our tax dollars the most efficient way that we can. Thank you. Mr. Kearns. Yeah, one of our most recent uh, consolidation efforts was, uh, was between the, the county, our regional fire districts, and actually every, every city except for the city of Spokane uh, within the county, and that was the creation of Shrek, our, our uh, regional consolidated 911 system. Uh, it was a way for us to consolidate that service into one, into one system, bring down costs, streamline the system, and uh, most importantly, eliminating transfers of calls um, that just adds to the dispatch time. Um, what, one, of the, uh, one of the other things that we're currently working on is between the county, the city of Spokane, and Spokane Valley, and that's, uh, and that's looking at a regional approach to homelessness. 
the county has uh, purchased a new shelter and we're also paying for renovations of an existing city shelter in an effort to create bridge housing, which essentially is a more service oriented program uh, to help people get out of that, uh, to, to get out of that cycle of homelessness. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Our next question, we'll start with Mr. Kearns. What priority would you give to environmental health issues in the county, including clean air, clean water, and the health of our aquifer, and what specific steps would you take? Mm -hmm. So um, the, the the county commissioners have a have a seat on our local Spokane Regional Clean Air Agency board. That's the organization that tracks air quality throughout our region. I know we we all saw their their graphs during these uh, the couple weeks ago during the the wildfire smoke. Um, but air quality is me measured by particulate matter that's in the air. And one of the ways that the county helps uh, impact that is through our, gra our um, gravel roads restabilization program where we mix gravel with magnesium chloride, which is actually what we use for de-icer. It helps bond the gravel together and then um, also keep dust down uh, to, to, um, to help with clean air. Uh, we also run our region's um, commute trip reduction program which helps folks find uh, other ways from getting to and from work other than a car, uh, resulting in uh, reduction of traffic, uh, congestion, and air pollution. And we also run a state-of-the-art um, water reclamation facility that um, helps keep water, out, um, d divert them away Thank from septic you. tanks, which if one of them Your fails, time is could up. be devastating Thank for our office. Thank you very much. Your time is up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cummings. So uh, climate change is real, and it's it's the biggest challenge that we currently face alongside of our pandemic. We have this perfect storm of, of challenges and opportunities ahead of us. Um, we need to do everything we can to reduce commutes, uh, to look at new ways of, uh, of putting up buildings that are clean and green and uh, efficient. And I, I think that's a, it's a, a way that we can do two things at once. We can help protect our environment, uh, have cleaner air and water and land and at the same time reduce our carbon footprint in, in the world. So my concern is that uh, the, the county, you know, is, is, is more concerned on, on appeasing developers and contractors and corporations and not really protecting the environment. So I wanna make sure that the land and the water and the air is developed responsibly and safely and that we do it uh, and without sprawling out across the county, we keep uh, our footprint as small as we can. Thank you very much. The next question is slightly related to that, and we'll begin with Mr. Cummings. How important do you think it is to address climate change, and what specific actions, if any, would you support at the local level? Uh, as I just said, it, it's extremely important. And, and I, I will look at whatever, uh, we have a lot of different uh, advocacy groups, uh, the, the River Keepers and the Sierra Club and all those, uh, necessary groups that are calling for change. And we need to collaborate with them. We need to listen to them and we need to take their ideas and see how they mesh. And, and we have to balance that with jobs. You know, it, it, we, we have to always be as clean as we can, work towards a, a zero emission state. But we have to remember we need to keep people working and we need to realize that we manufacture in this country cleaner and safer and more efficiently than anywhere in the world. So I don't want people to, to turn to shutting manufacturing and job creation down here. We can do it, we can keep doing it, improving it, we can be the role model for the world. And I'd like to see that start right here in Spokane County. Thank you very much. Mr. Kearns. Yeah, no, we, we need, we, we at the county to take a conscious effort to make sure that, that we're good stewards of, uh, of, of our region and of our, of our, of our public lands. Uh, like I mentioned with, with our commute trip reduction program, you know, what, one of the, one of the largest contributors of, uh, of carbon emissions are, are automobiles. Um, you know, that commute trip reduction program is something that encourages folks to take alternative forms of transportation, you know, wh whether it's carpooling, whether it's taking the bus, uh, biking or walking, and they'll help you figure those things out. Um, you know, when, when we look at also, you know, Spokane County is, is a leader in, uh, in conservation futures lands. We have over 9,100 acres of, uh, 
of, of land that, that will now be preserved for, for the, the next several generations, if, if not forever, uh, for, for our community to, to, uh, to, to enjoy. You know, the, 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 those are wilderness areas open for everybody. For, you know, if you want to go hiking, I mean, that, it, it's there for you. We, we have a strong commitment. Okay. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our next question, we'll start with Mr. Kearns. Generally speaking, equality means treating everyone the same, and equity means giving everyone what they need to be successful. Which approach do you favor with respect to services provided by Spokane County, and can you give any specific examples of how your preferred approach would be applied? Yeah, um, so e equality is treating everyone the same, but part of equity is understanding that not everybody starts out in the same place. We use equity in, uh, in many of the ways that we deliver our services at the county, um, from, you know, fr from the most simplest form and offering our services both in person and online, uh, understanding that some people may have barriers to coming down to the courthouse, whether it be a physical disability or a barrier to transportation, but also recognizing that those services have to be um, have to be available in person because there's some people that, who don't have access to internet. Um, also, other ways where, where we've committed to equity is as a health board member, uh, I supported the health equity resolution that the, that the health board passed back on July 30th. And as a commissioner, I've supported uh, the criminal justice guiding principles, which committed to using multiple equity lenses, including race, socioeconomics, gender, age, and education um, to help overcome the disparities that we see. Okay. Thank you. And Mr. Cummings. Well, Absolutely. I think uh, equity is, is an important way to look at uh, how we, we treat everyone. Um, the, people do start at, at different levels and there is disparate treatment out there and we see it every day. We see it across our nation right now. Um, so we have to look at the challenges every group is facing and, and make adjustments to, to, to uh, help equality. Um, we have to look at every situation as its unique uh, circumstances and, and make those adjustments for them. And I, and I, I see there's some pushback on that uh, about the quality equity thing, but it, it, isn't, it isn't favoring anyone. It's giving everyone a chance and an opportunity to succeed. And it's absolutely the, the right thing to do. Thank you very much. I'd like to move into your closing statements now. You'll each have 30 seconds, and we'll start with Mr. Cummings. Well, thank you so much for uh, having me here tonight. And, and again, I just I want to reiterate that my campaign here is about serving everyone. And my concern is that my current commissioner is actively attacking uh, my way of life, my, my union labor way of life. Uh, and I think that spreads to everyone, whether you're a Muslim or, or a person of color or Everyone needs to feel that they're part of this community and they're welcome in this community and they're respected in this community. That's what I want to do. Thank you. Mr. Kearns. Uh, thank you for the League of Women Voters for the opportunity to be here tonight. Four years ago when I ran for office, I promised that I would work to protect and grow jobs, protect your tax dollars, and prioritize public safety. I have kept those promises. I have a proven track record of success and accomplishments through promoting job growth with our public development authorities, providing for our sheriff's department, and I've never once voted to raise your property taxes. I'd be honored to continue as your commissioner. I'm Josh Kearns, and I ask you to join me, and together we will continue to get results for Spokane County. Thank you both. This Thank concludes you. our 2020 general election candidate forum featuring candidates for Spokane County Commissioner District 1. Again, they are Ted Cummings and Josh Kearns. On behalf of the League of Women Voters, thank you to our candidates. We appreciate you being with us. Thank you for your participation in this forum. We hope that this has given you, the voters, the information that will help you make an informed decision when marking your ballots by Election Day, Tuesday, November the 3rd, 2020. For more information, please visit our website lwvspokane.org or our online voters guide at 
vote411.org. Thank you again. Good night. Thank you, Jim. Thank you.